Rev up your engine! Oh, here's a 2020 Chevy Sonic. I'm gonna tell you everything you wanted to know and maybe some things you didn't. Now, they've been selling these things since 1998. Originally, they were Daiwoo's, then they were GM Daiwoo's, and now GM Korea. Now, in the last 10 years, they sold between 20 and 39,000 of these every year. It's a subcompact car, as you can tell, but even though it's got a Chevrolet badge, they've always been made in Korea. Now it's GM Korea, but basically, this is what the Daiwoo company turned into. It turned into Chevy Spark. Now they're a low priced car. These start at $13,400, and they have a little bitty 98 horsepower engine. As you can see under the hood, a little bitty Ecotec engine. And in this case, the engine's hooked up to a CVT transmission, because this is a rental car. They're a lot zippier with a standard, but all the rental cars are gonna be automatics here in the States. So you might think, okay, it doesn't even get out of its own way. But au contraire, when I was driving from Nashville, to my son's house here, we were doing 80 on the highway. It had no problems passing the semis going uphill. Yeah, it made the engine go a little higher in the RPMs, but it wasn't anything outrageous. They're not that bad when it comes down to it. They're much better than the earlier ones were. They're technically called city cars, because you can see they're handy for the city. But the back seats do go forward, so you have room. And as we go inside, you can see it's pretty much an econo box car. It's just plastic, right? But the seats are reasonably comfortable. I was surprised. And being a modern car, as you can see, it's still got a modern interface here. It's not that basic. You can make it a Wi-Fi hotspot. It's got stuff on it. You can hook your phone up, and when you go down there, it's got a charge port, and it's got USB stuff, too. So it's not as basic as you might think. And it's summer in Nashville. Freezing cold air conditioning. Now, we Americans think of this as a subcompact car, but in some parts of Asia, it's seen as a pretty big car <laughs> when you compare it to some of the stuff they buy. Now, being a rental car, this baby's only got 15,000 miles on it, so it really hasn't any big long-term test. For that, I can tell you about my customers who own older ones. Now, the ones with standard transmissions were a lot happier. This has the CVT transmission. Presently, it's the only vehicle that General Motors sells that has a CVT transmission. And guess what? It has a crappy Jatco automatic transmission, the company that Nissan owns. They make some of the worst CVTs in the world. And guess what these things have problems with? The CVT transmissions, historically, they have problems with the band slipping and all kinds of stuff goes wrong with them. And here is the kicker. You're dealing with a car that it's the only General Motors car that has a CVT transmission. If they break, the guys at the dealership, they're not very good at fixing them. I had customers with them. They couldn't fix them. They ended up having to replace them with another unit. When you have one car on your whole line that has a CVT transmission, believe me, getting repairs on it is bleh. Consequently, these have horrendous resale values. You can pick them up dirt cheap. If you want a dirt cheap car, you got found one with low mileage and the transmission still works, or, preferably, if you find one with the standard transmission, they're actually decent, and they're a lot zippier. Don't think you can buy this thing, and if you get tired of it, you can get much money for it. You will get nothing for it when you try to sell it. But that's why it's touted as a city car. Because guess what? People in the city, they don't drive much. I live in downtown Houston, okay? You know what I put on my car last year? 900 miles. And my wife's Lexus, we put like 1,800 miles on it. So if you buy this as a city car, like I had one customer, she had a whopping 45,000 miles on it. It still worked okay. So in that case, you kind of get what you pay for. And I do have to say I was surprised when I drove it on the highway, 80 miles an hour, extremely stable, didn't wobble all around, went nice and straight, past semis going uphill 80 miles an hour. It really wasn't that bad. I was shocked. I expect it to be much worse. And when you're just cruising 60, 65, it's only going about 2,000 RPM, so you can get 37, 38 miles a gallon on these things on the highway. And they're perfectly fine, smooth riding, as long as you're on a highway or on a smooth road that doesn't have bumps in it. Of course, when you get on a bumpy road, this tiny wheelbase, it's not that wide, it rides like a bucket. You feel everything on a road when you hit bumps, but it's a city car. It's not made for smooth, comfortable riding. First car I had was an Opal. 
1967. And I'd say when you're hitting bumps, this rode about as well as that 67 Opal did when people were complaining that they thought their fillings were gonna fall out of their teeth every time you hit a bump. <laughs> but it ran, it still ran, and it was red too. This is a nicer color red though. I gotta say, it's a nice color. Look under the hood, hey, this thing's easy to work on. There's all kinds of space. This is not cramped. You can get to anything relatively easily. It's not a hard to work on car. And if you use full synthetic oil and change it regularly, the engines actually hold up quite well. I've seen engines for 170,000 miles and they were still running okay. Now this isn't a car that you buy and beat it up and drive like a maniac and don't change the oil, no. But you get a little city car like this, if you take care of it, it could last a while other than the CVT transmission. That is flying the ointment on this baby. But granted, I have to say, this is a 2020, so who knows? I haven't seen any of those break yet. The ones that I saw break were all 10, 12 years old. They might be making them better than they were. You get a little car like this with 98 horsepower, let's face it, there isn't that much strain on the actual engine and transmission because it doesn't weigh much and it doesn't have a lot of horsepower. This baby just weighs a little over one ton. It's 2,200 pounds. I've worked on three ton cars. It doesn't weigh much, you know? So if you take care of it, it might last quite some time. And at $13,000, it certainly is a cheap new car. But as I said, the resale value is horrendous. So if you find maybe someone who bought one, they didn't like it, it's low mileage, you can pick them up dirt cheap and especially if they've got the standard transmission that would be a, actually a very good buy because it's a korean car and if it has a standard transmission i've seen these things with 150 on them they were still piddling around perfectly fine we'll take it for a spin now see how it goes starts right up and it may be in a column box car but it's still got a decent backup camera on it power windows front and back and they're pretty big in the back out of air if you want it and check it out they're even auto stop Woo wee, look at that. Auto stop. Now, as I said, it's no race car, but watch this. Makes some noise, but it has some acceleration. It's not that bad, really. And being a small car, hey, it's pretty nimble. You twirl around in this thing, it has no problem turning. It's a city car. Look at that. Thing turns on a dime. It really handles quite well. And we're on a new smooth road here. It was paved last year. It rides quite well. Just stay away from the big potholes. <laughs> You'll feel it when you hit them. And this is the part that amazes me. We are now idling. This is a little bitty four-cylinder engine. The baby does not shake. This car idles just as smooth as my wife's Lexus. And that really shocked me. Even she was shocked and how smooth this thing idles. Now, now some people are gonna say, oh, Scott, he says he hates GM cars. Well, realize, it's not a GM car. Sure, it's got a Chevy emblem. There it is on a steering wheel. But it's a Korean car, made in Korea by Koreans. The company's just called GM Korea now. <laughs> and Daewoo, they failed in the United States when they tried to sell them themselves. I mean, who would call a car the Daewoo Charade? I mean, they needed some marketing help too. But for a little city car, this thing isn't bad if you don't beat it. Like I said, especially with a standard transmission. But I was shocked at the power the CVT transmission had. It was no problem driving on the highway. I really didn't have any problems. Granted, it's only got 15,000 miles on it. You know, we'll see what happens as time goes on. Four or five years from now, I'll see if my customers' cars are broken down or whether they're still going. The people always talk about tiny cars, tiny. This isn't that tiny inside. I'm not that small of a guy. Look at all the space between the top and my head. A tall guy can easily fit in this car. To say the least, this car was not designed by fool. They see a market and they tailored it for people. Hook up your phone, whatever you want. Decent backup camera, lots of plugs you can plug stuff in. The people that built this thing put some thought into it. And I do have to say, it's a reasonably sharp looking city car. It's got a great color. I like the red and black louver combination. See, we got decent alloy wheels on it. As cheap as the car is, you don't expect nice alloy wheels, but it's got nice alloy wheels. And sure, it's got old fashioned drum brakes in the back, but it's got discs in the front. And in a car that weighs about one ton, that's plenty enough to stop this thing. You feel totally secure slamming the brakes on the highway. So now you know a little bit more about the Chevy Spark, or should I say, GM Korean Spark since they're made in Korea. It's really 
not that bad of a city car if you want a really low priced car. And on the highway, like I say, it cruised at 80, no problems at all. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.